<laughs> okay, so I was saying that there are many QA-related sessions at DevConf, and that, uh, well, QA work seems to go into many directions, but we have little team-like interactions inside the, the QA world. Well, QA is not really a team, but still. Um, so I propose this session to have a chance to discuss uh, what we are doing between the various efforts that are going on. Also, if you go to the wiki and look at the QA Debian org slash activities page, you will see that there's such a wiki page with items from 2006, so maybe you could try to refresh it a bit today. Uh, and also think about what could be done or improved in what we are doing. So first, I tried to list what the QA team is doing. And, and there are two big categories, so feel free to just uh, shout if I'm forgetting something. Um, so first, we maintain infrastructure to detect uh, problems and report issues found using that infrastructure, either using bugs or through other means. Uh, so, for example, Lintian uh, and Lintian Debian Org, Pupats and Pupats Debian Org, CI Debian Net, uh, Jenkins Debian Net, uh, and which is related to reproducible builds, and the archive rebuilds. And then we also maintain infrastructure to expose information to maintainers and teams, so mainly uh, tracker, um, packages, uh, QA Debian Org, so the old PTS, uh, the Debian Developers Package Overview, and the uh, Ultimate Debian Database. And yes, there's also the, the MEI, MIA team that is uh, part of the QA team, yeah. So did I forget anything major on that list? I don't think so. But. So then I tried to think about new stuff that happened since last year. Uh, there's uh, gating a few parts being used for gating to testing. Uh, CI, Debian Net could be at some point too. I mean, that would be uh, one of the easy things to do uh, in, the, in a similar way. This uh, release cycle, I try. Yeah, sorry? I try to do that this release cycle. So CI, Debian Net, uh, cool, nice. Uh, another thing is uh, archive rebuilds happening again on a regular basis. Uh, so that's what I've been uh, mainly working on uh, over the last year. Uh, and then since this is above, I have a list of uh, discussion items. Uh, so I'm just going to go through them uh, quickly uh, and then we can go back to the ones that uh, you think are the most uh, important. So the first one is uh, the QA Debian org machine, the quants, and the QA SVN repository. So there we have many services glued together, many unmaintained services too. Uh, and uh, we could discuss what we want to do with that, especially in the context of the uh, stretch release. We are probably going to be asked to upgrade it to stretch at some point. Uh, and that's not going to be something that will be fun to do. So I'm of the opinion that we could probably <coughs> kill QA Debian org entirely and move uh, use, the useful services to separate VMs or containers. It doesn't really make sense to have this, uh, this all glued to, together. Uh, so we can discuss about that later. Uh, another thing that we could discuss is uh, from the infrastructure point of view, uh, what what we duplicate quite a lot is a scheduler for QA checks. We all use uh, different methods. Uh, well, each test infrastructure uses something different for that. And clearly, there's, uh, we could do better than, than that uh, and have a, at least a similar way to schedule uh, jobs. Uh, in about tools, um, some, some things that is a bit uh, lacking is a common tool to manage must bug filings. So I have quite a lot of things for archive rebuilds, uh, but probably if we had uh, better tools for that, it would make it easier to file issues for other kind of failures as well. Uh, then we could discuss about uh, additional checks to do. Um, so I have two ideas. Well, I need to be careful about the size of the screen. 
Let me try to do something about that. could discuss additional checks to do uh, and there's uh, two listed there but we could uh, brainstorm about that uh, and there's uh, the question of uh, broken packages in unstable so there was a discussion on the Debian QA list a few weeks ago about that uh, what was done was I filed bugs against all packages that were neither in JC nor uh, stretch and still not in testing and not uploaded in the beginning of the year uh, asking if they should be removed. Uh, we could go into, uh, we, could, we could go a bit further. So clearly we don't want to aggressively remove uh, tons of packages. Just the goal is just to identify the ones that are clearly unmaintained for years and that don't have anything to do in uh, unstable. Um, but we could have a, a kind of rolling requirements that packages could kind of stay out of testing for more than one or two years and target those or at least go through those and uh, ask, if, ask if those should be removed. Uh, so yeah, so that's... Look, look us. Um, regarding this last comment, um, I, this morning I actually discussed the use case where we could have Back in the, so I'm thinking of the bike shed PPA thingy where packages that basically have a upstream way faster release cycle than what we have in Debian where old versions don't make much sense. Yeah. Uh, I could imagine that we have something that is in the archive, mm -hmm. remains in uh, unstable and is provided via a bike shed or a PPA and then this requirement would basically means that impossible. So I'd, I'd don't like this requirement for no, well, okay. such uh, a future the, uh, use the important case. part here is here is there, except exceptions uh, and well when I filed the bugs about uh, on packages not in testing no stretch I excluded all those that were that were uploaded at least at least once since the beginning of the year so if you have that kind of things, uh, I think the goal is not to force maintainers to remove their packages. If people yeah, are so the requirement is and, and not updated, I guess. Yeah. Right. I was going to say the same thing, that um, we have packages. It, we need to distinguish between packages that are not suitable for a stable release because they're not stable in the sense of um, not suitable when they don't change, and packages that yeah are not suitable for a stable release because they're broken. Hmm. Yeah. And we, we have a decent number of packages that, that can never be in a stable release because it would just be useless. But we still want them. Yeah, yeah. And potentially, we still even want to like, compile them against stable. Hmm. It would but, be good to be able to have backports or something similar. Yeah. But I think the, we are never going to just blindly remove everything that matches uh, a list of criteria. I mean, in, in that case, I filed a bug against each, each of the packages that was uh, in my initial list, saying that uh, if you think that it should remain in a stable, just close the bug. And uh, if the bug remains for more than one month, then I will remove the package and well, do another pass. Before that, do another pass on the packages and identify the ones that should really stay, but uh, yeah. It would be maybe nice to have um, a bit more in the way of guidelines for like what we as a project consider to be a reasonable way of doing these should this package yeah. be removed bugs. I mean, I, I know I've filed a lot of those from bug squashing parties, mm. like looking at a RC buggy package and going, I don't mm. want to fix this. I don't want this in Debian. <laughs> yeah. Yep, so I'm relaying one question for IRC. Uh, Rafael Herzog. Uh, he says, as tracker.debian.org maintainer, I would be interested in some shared infrastructure to schedule jobs and to run them. And then, as uh, the CI maintainer, I'm also interested in that, I think. Um, to do what, sorry? To, uh, he's interested in some shared infrastructure to schedule jobs and to run them. Okay. like. The, mm -hmm. Yeah. topic you said yeah. a little earlier and that's the yeah, I maintain I'm also interested in that so right now I use um, like a forever running batch of code that 
is always checking if there is there a new version of this package and then running the test but then I don't really need that uh, if there's some some something else that's going to request test then it just mm. works for me as well yeah yeah, the, the difficult part here is that I'm not sure what is a good way to do to do that. I mean, from a, from a design point of view, designing something that suits all needs is not going to be really easy. But uh, yeah. yeah. So someone needs to think hard about all the requirements. Yeah. Yeah. So I I have to rewrite that thing for Dev and CI anyway at some mm -hmm. point because the current implementation is not. Mm -hmm optimize at all it's very slow so maybe i will throw that in and try to think of a way of uh, actually uh, also being able to trigger stuff elsewhere and we don't we don't, we don't even need to run that in the mci itself so. yeah. maybe what we could do about that is have everyone doing some kind of scheduling explain on the list what it's currently doing because uh I don't know, that, that's something that is usually quite internal to the <coughs> to the checks that is not exposed publicly, and it would be interesting as a starting point just to compare what people are doing. Because, for example, I'm, uh, I can think of two different things I do regarding that. For the archive rebuilds, I generate uh, a list at the beginning of the rebuild with all the packages I need to build, and then schedule using uh, a central process that just does SSH on various nodes. And for um, in UDD, there's a uScan uh, scanner, uh, and that runs uh, on a regular basis and just looks at which packages need to be tested. So it's completely different ways to do the to do this. And yeah. Yeah. Raphael also says um, this is something that we are reinventing everywhere, which yeah. is the point we made already, and we should be able to have some sort of high-level descriptions, run the scripts in a seed CH root, and send me back any the logs and the artifacts. Hmm. Yeah. Um, maybe we can talk a bit about possible checks to run uh, during the buster release cycle. Um, so there are two things that uh, uh, annoy me quite, uh, quite a bit. First one is uh, the packages that, that failed to build twice in a row. So a long time ago, I did some work on filing bugs for those. So that's typically what you, you run into that when you try to, to debug uh, packages that fail to build. Uh, you try once, uh, it fails, you change something, you try again, it doesn't work. Uh, probably there are lots of packages in that case uh, nowadays. The other how, thing that how relevant is that check still? Sorry? How relevant is that check still in the way we currently, I, I think everybody just builds every time fresh from the source package that you have. So I think this check made a lot of sense in the past and I'm wondering, I mean, I, as a maintainer, yeah. I really don't check anymore for this. So I run into this when, uh, well, when I work on a package and try to, to debug uh, a build failure, for example. Yeah, but I, I know two of my packages which are extremely complicated to build properly anyway, and if I, I'm not sure that it would build twice in a row depending on where you are, actually. Mm -hmm. So I think for my package, it would be a lot of work for me to guarantee this for, I think, extremely little gain. So mm -hmm. I do see it, yeah. but it makes the requirements on my uh, build rules okay. an extremely lot higher because upstream doesn't help me there as well and I have to intervene a lot for my Debian package so today how we build stuff and how at, even I operate I think it's a hard requirement I kind of wonder whether if we have like a QA requirement that clearly doesn't work for a reasonable number of upstreams and there's like an easy way to not need this requirement like don't use debuild, use git build package or whatever. I kind of wonder whether the answer is just don't have that requirement then. 
like admit defeat and go, uh, well, okay, you're expected to build from a clean Git tree. Deal with it. We could do that. I mean, probably the discussion to have on the either Debian Devil or Debian Policy mailing list because currently the what the policy states, I think, is that the, all the targets are supposed to work even if you call them twice in a row without clean between them. You can do Debian rules build, Debian rules build, it's supposed to work. Right, but um, you know, policy doesn't exist to make us happy. Policy exists to help us build an operating system. Sure. And uh, any time we have like, a policy rule that's really annoying to mm. comply with, mm. we, we should like, consider what is the cost benefit here? Mm. Is, is the cost of having this policy rule greater than the benefit? And if it is, throw it away. Yeah, exactly. In this case, I think the, the policy is old, and in those days, I think it made sense. I think now rebuilding is just a lot cheaper, and uh, the, the time of the developer is more expensive in, in that respect. Well, I, well uh, I think it's still quite annoying to have to really clean completely your Git tree each time you want to test a small change to see if, well. Yeah, but, it's uh, in, extremely annoying for me to guarantee it. <laughs> so, uh, I, I agree with you that this could be really frustrating if you're in some random package and you want to fix that particular bug and uh, after you build your, mm -hmm. the system is so much screwed up that it basically has to do apt get source again afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think this requirement still makes a sense for a few. Uh, for you a get few clone and get clean. <laughs> for for uh, several packages, but when you, for example, uh, have packages in the repository, I think that could be relaxed. Because uh, using the repository then helps you a lot also to go back to a state where it's more yeah, safe. That's not the typical workflow we advertise when doing NMUs, for example. So, yeah. It's, yeah. Mm, sure, yeah. Right, balance. Um, I think uh, this uh, build twice in a row, is it a must in policy? I think it's a should, so it's not really mandatory as far as I remember. So maybe we are okay, discussing maybe. for nothing. I don't remember those bugs being RC. Well, uh, I think there was some, dis well, the RCness is uh, decided by, by the release team, so. Yeah. Uh, I found an other interesting corner case where I went to uh, create a source-only build and it failed, uh, but uh, it can be tested in uh, S-build, I think, because you can't just source build. You, Sorry, can you? Uh, so they, you don't build all, either, any. So just a source. And I downloaded a source package, wanted to create a, uh, fix something, uh, create a source to upload it, mm. not, of course, to unstable, but for testing, mm. and it failed, just the clean target. Uh, but not after the first, after a full build, but uh, right before I did anything. No, that would be surprising, because when I do yeah. archive rebuilds, uh, I start by building the source package. So uh, it was something odd in the clean target. Uh, I, I will check that, but... Uh, uh, I'm I interested, because uh, I think I should catch that. Okay. But, uh, Maybe it was temporary. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, recent. Uh, it's only relatively recent that S build supports only building source. Um, I, I have a build tool that wants to do this, and I had to have some really horrible workarounds while I was using S build from Jesse Backports, uh, or from like the um, S build branch or whatever it was. But um, in stretch versions, that like, should work. Uh, I tried just backwards right. uh, as built, so there was maybe a problem here. Could be. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, in that version, you had to like tell it, build all the things, except don't build arch all, except also don't build arch any. And then it like thinks it's doing a AMD64 build or whatever that happens to produce no binaries, and it gets really confused. 
And um, if you look in the Git history of this build tool, Vectis, there's this, there's this horrible hack involving a Perl one-liner to rename the changes file from what sbuild thinks it should have produced to what it actually produced. Um, but in stretch, that just works fine. So you might find that this has been fixed. Cool, thanks. So uh, the other thing is packages that fail to build randomly, so that's not considered uh, RC. So that, by that, I mean packages that uh, fail to build, and if you retry, it works. And if you try again, it fails. And sometimes it's 10%, uh, sometimes 90% of the, of the case. Uh, and there's quite a lot of those currently, probably about uh, one or 200 packages in the archive currently. But my, bo my goal here was mostly, was more to discuss additional ideas of checks that you have in mind, no time to implement and would like someone to, to pick up, because that's a good time of the release cycle to do that. So, um, so somebody, uh, mentioned the case where um, apart from testing build stuff that if there's an upload of a uh, library that you actually want to uh, check that everything that refers depends on that uh, builds at that time. I, uh, in, uh, sort of what I'm now trying to do with uh, auto package testers actually have that sort of gating before it migrates to testing. So rebuild, and it's, I think it doesn't scale, but it would be great if it could, rebuild everything that reverse depends mm -hmm. in, as it is in testing with the library from mm -hmm. unstable. So there are two ways to, I know to do that. The first one is in the Ruby team, we have scripts to automate that. Uh, so we can just uh, rebuild all reverse dependencies with a new version of the package and run uh, auto package test with a new version of the package of all uh, reverse dependencies. So uh, that's something that we should probably push uh, so that others can use it because it's really useful. Uh, and the other way is uh, I do archive rebuilds for new versions of uh, interpreters or compilers before they as default or before they reach the archive. For example, for GCC, I do that quite frequently. Uh, so that's an option for large teams if well, for a large set of packages. Uh. It would maybe, uh, so from a like maintainer point of view here, it would maybe be nice if there was a way for a maintainer of a package to like opt into this, like set a flag in your changes yeah. file or whatever to say, I think this one is kind of risky. Yeah. Um, please do the big rebuild thing and don't land it until we have the results. Yeah, that, that would be really nice, but it's probably something that uh, needs right, to be done using uh, bike sheds. It touches like <laughs> CI and S build yeah. and wanna build and all these things that like three people in the world understand, right? <laughs> <laughs> so many. Okay, sorry, one. Yeah. As you mentioned, there are only like three people in the world understanding those tools. I think uh, exactly because of this, we might you do something like that because then the people really do not need to understand them because there's some way to do the do those checks automatically. So it would be a great thing, I think. Well, it doesn't have to be done using the same software as the one used to run the Debian archive. It could be done using uh, aptly and whatever it is easier to use. Yeah, for smaller set of packages, that there is RADT, RAT, rebuild all the things, so you can uh, rebuild all the reverse dependencies uh, by just typing one command, uh, but you need some CPU time, of course. Uh, and uh, I would like to help in making the scripts performing the rebuilds uh, on, uh, on Amazon uh, I would like to have been making those a bit easier to use because I, I f wanted to try them, but it was confusing, so I gave up and I used some other stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it would be nice if others could, could use it easily. And yeah. it's really cheap, I think. Uh, do you have some numbers? How much does it cost to 
uh, do we have full rebuild of Debian on Amazon? Well, it's zero because Amazon is uh, offering us unlimited credits. Okay, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, and another thing I uh, would like to mention here, uh, a nice byproduct of the rebuilds would be a report of the Lintian warnings going away with the rebuild of a package. Uh, I've, uh, for example, I worked on the transition to Pi binaries and I had to check if the, uh, the Lintian check uh, reports no warning against the binaries after a rebuild. And uh, for example, uh, some DH update could also help in packages resolving things which are checked by Lintian. Yeah, so in the past I was running Lintian after each build. Uh, it just it takes a lot of time to run Lintian on some, on some packages, so it probably multiply the total build time by 1.5 uh, to give an idea. So especially because uh, build time is most, the total archive rebuild duration is limited, is caused by the longest packages. So everything else fits uh, in the time it takes to rebuild. You know what's the longest packages currently, if it's uh, still uh, LibreOffice or what. But uh, basically you can rebuild everything else at, during the time it takes to rebuild uh, LibreOffice. So if you run Lintian after the build of LibreOffice on LibreOffice, uh, it just adds more delay uh, until you can file bugs. Yeah. But there yeah, I, I note your offer to help with the scripts. So the, the full story is um, I did not work on archive rebuilds for about, uh, or did really f uh, little work for about two years, and someone else was interested in uh, taking over the, that work. Uh, the difficult thing is you need to uh, find the right balance between being able to file bugs on a regular basis and doing work to improve the infrastructure part. So over the last year, I mostly did work on filing bugs. Um, the work that, that was done to improve the scripts was actually never, never reached a stage where it could be used. So I'm still using my old scripts from uh, three years ago. I agree that it's far from perfect, but uh, yeah, just need someone to spend some time on getting them in a better shape. Another really nice addition would be running auto package tests on the build binaries. Mm -hmm. uh, and Guillaume would like me to do it before we can enable by now archive-wide, so there would be some incentive uh, doing that, but uh, I'm not sure how far we are from this possibility. You mean being able to upload arbitrary binaries to CI and have it run on those binaries? Uh, I was thinking of uh, bootstrapping a CI node in, on Amazon's infrastructure after building the, rebuilding the whole archive and using the rebuilt archive to run all the okay. auto package tests on this set of packages. Yeah, it's something that we can think about. I, mean, I need help to do that, but yeah, it should be possible. Something that um, I think is sometimes missing from these like um, big rebuild or like big QA across all the things kind of tools is um, having a way for individual maintainers to like reproduce the problem. So like if, if, your, if your package is like failing a peer parts test mm -hmm. or failing auto package tests in the particular environment that CI uses or like failing to build an S build, it's not always obvious um, how you can determine whether your version that you think you're, you think you've fixed is actually going to pass, yeah. because um, some of this, you know, some of these pieces of infrastructure are like, uh, well, this is some magic cluster somewhere in Amazon, and um, it's not clear to an individual maintainer how to get like a small version of it. You have something like that with PU parts that I'm not fully sure on how to run. And right. I've done it a couple of times. And so um, I don't mean to be like self-advertising here, but something I've been working on for a while that might interest people is um, I've been doing this build tool called Vectis, 
which... Um, Called what? Vectis. The idea... Um, there's an ITP bug open. Um, the idea is it... Um, it's, it's like primarily a build tool for maintainers, but it also does like QA checks, like peer parts and things. Mm -hmm. And the idea is it um, creates a throwaway auto package test VM. It installs the infrastructure you need to do this particular test, like um, you know, S build to do your build, or peer parts, or like LXC to do an auto package test in LXC or whatever. It does the test, does all the builds or testing or whatever, and then throws away the VM. So, like, for the things that, I, that I've added to this, it's also, like, reasonably good executable documentation, mm. if you see what I mean, of how to get a particular test environment. Mm. And, you know, for some, pa for some packages, it's quite obvious how to set this up. Like, um, thank you for documenting ci.debian.net LXC so well. That's, that was quite easy to reproduce as, like, close enough. But for some of them, like S-Build, I have to like um, reverse engineer from the Puppet modules um, how the real S-Builds are set up, and then go off and do the same slightly strange setup. So, um, so for the archive builds, I just use uh, the standard S-Build setup script. There's nothing strange about what is being configured. So, I mean, there are ways to do to configure all those tools that are super complex but also ways to configure those tools that are that simple. I mean, for the Ruby team scripts, I think we do just the basic stuff, the basic default stuff, and that's enough, I mean. Right, so, so, my, so my concern with like doing things the simple way is that's fine as long as what Debian actually does in production is equally simple, but it isn't always. Like, the, the, the real Debian S build for a long time was not stable S build and it wasn't Jesse Backport's S build either. It was like some minor fork of stable S build. That's true, but uh, your starting point was reproducing the failures that are reported in bug reports. So those are not necessarily from the, those are rarely from the real build Ds. Most of the, ca in most cases they are from either from, uh, from me or from the reproducible builds. Right. So, so, so there, there, is kind of, there is kind of a question here of um, if it fails in your infrastructure and it doesn't fail in like the real Debian infrastructure, how critical is it really? I mean, it's like this fails in a reasonable situation that someone might want. But how release critical is that if Debian's real production infrastructure is perfectly happy with it? <laughs> Oh, do you? Well, I, I don't get your point because uh, the fact that it fails when I do a carry build doesn't mean that it doesn't fail on the Debian infrastructure. It could just be that uh, the package that is in the archive was built uh, two years ago at a time when GCC was an earlier version. I mean, GC, uh, newer GCC versions are, are a good example. Uh, we don't rebuild old packages in Debian, in the Debian archive, uh, when there's a new GCC version. The only way to detect uh, issues introduced by a new GC version is to do an out of the archive rebuild, like I do. Right, sure. Um, but what I mean is, if we were to rebuild like the, pack the package that is failing on the real Debian infrastructure now, it's not always clear that that would produce the same result as Maybe the in rebuild in like Amazon. Maybe in one percent of the case, but okay. yeah. usually wh what I do is when there's someone who cannot reproduce the failure, I ask for the build log. And SBuild is quite good at uh, <laughs> providing a lot, on, a lot of information in the build log. So usually it's just uh, diffing the build log using a uh, right, graphical yeah. diff tool gives you a good idea of what it, why it's, uh, where it's broken. Uh, there are some uh, some strange cases like well, all the random failures are annoying because of that. But uh, when, I, when I file bugs, uh, when I do archive rebuilds, uh, failures are automatically retried once. So I don't see most of them. I only see random failures that fail twice in a row uh, in my yeah. testing environment. Mm, I, I don't see it as a big problem. In, in, in practice, it's not a big problem. And usually, uh, when digging uh, into the, the failure, you end up uh, 
uh, finding a root cause that is a real issue. Um, yeah, it's really rare. It comes from smaller memory size uh, in the VMs you use for rebuilding, I think, or one single CPU where some um, special tests fail. If you, the other case is more frequent. At some point, I was using uh, really large uh, Amazon VMs with uh, 63 cores and uh, 266 uh, gigabytes of RAM. Uh, that was because that was the only CPU with um, the special TSX instructions enabled. Uh, and that caught a few, a few bugs. Uh, and so many, some packages, I would say a dozen maybe, failed to build when doing parallel builds on really huge number of cores. So that, that happens. Uh, but uh, that, that, that's a real problem. I mean, it means there's a dependency missing somewhere uh, in a make file and probably or something like that. And uh, you want them to be fixed. Yeah, I think those cases, the severity can be reduced to important or something. Uh, but yeah. I would fix yeah. those. Yeah. But uh, if it doesn't fail on Debian infrastructure, I usually de uh, decrease the severity a bit to give me my, some more time before the, my package gets removed from testing. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I'm not saying it's not a bug. I'm saying it's not necessarily a really critical bug. You know, there are bugs and there are bugs. <clears throat> I don't think that's our problem. In the end, it's a really steam who decides, and I always fine with letting the release team deciding on the severity of bugs. Except for auto removals, <laughs> if you file them RC. Yeah, but usually, I mean, if the maintainer decides to downgrade the bug and uh, the release team agree, I'm perfectly fine with that. I, I don't care. I mean, I have nothing <laughs> against those packages, uh, those particular packages. <laughs> on the... Uh, services that we uh, provide. Um, I think uh, there could be a couple of the checks that we actually do that we uh, push more to the maintainer than we currently do. I mean, I, I find um, the CI tests that we currently do as a maintainer, I need to look for the results instead of being notified. Now, I'm particularly interested in the CI test, but I mean, the duck check as well. I mean, I, I've, I'm never notified. The only way to see it is on the tracker. And there's extremely lot of information on the tracker. If you have, I don't know, on my page, there currently uh, there's like 50 packages showing up. There's just too much information sometimes, especially not about the current state, because that's typically something that you could accept. But what you want to be notified of regressions. And I think we can always push more on these kind of issues, even on the, but I guess that maybe needs a, an opt-in kind of mechanism, or at least an opt-out <laughs> for being notified. Well, I, I think that it's a, well, the standard mechanism to report problems in Debian is uh, bugs, and we should not try too much to invent uh, new things outside of the BTS. It's not that hard to do mass bug filings. I mean, you, you could, you could for for the, for Duck, it could be uh, minor bugs, uh, yeah, or even wish list or, or wish list, whatever. Yeah, um, but that's actually quite easy to to do. I mean, but I think we should, yeah, yeah, that's the dangerous Enrico word, we should. <laughs> yeah, but no, I, I think, well, one of the things I really like, would like to do, uh, at least by the next DevConf, is uh, turn the tools I use to do a mass bug filing to something that is easily usable by someone else to do a mass bug filing on something else. Uh, that would be Which, for instance, could be used for the current use of CI. Yeah. CI could be a, could be a, a good target. Uh, yeah. I mean, I hope it's not needed for CI soon, but still. There's someone has strong opinions about that, the QA Debian org and QA SVN repository. That's when, uh, so that's. Um, so diff stat of what was changed since last year. So there's still quite a lot of things moving. Uh, but it's really scary when you look into it. Uh, that we have tons of different stuff that is completely unmaintained uh, for the last six or seven years. Um, 
in the so I don't know uh, one question I had maybe well, maybe Rafael can answer on ISC uh, because he's uh, listening what are the current blockers for uh, removing the PTS are there still some some blockers for that um, let's check ISC maybe it's not Does this also cover um, DDPO and the mm. thing in UDD, UDD yeah. that looks like DP DDPO but isn't? Yeah. Because those are like obvious duplicates of each other. Mm. Yeah. Unfortunately, each of them has some information that the other does not. Last I looked. Um, I'm not sure, but I'm not sure of uh, what's in DDPO and missing in uh, DMD. Uh, I think it might just be the color coding. I think it might just be the color coding, actually. Um, DDPO is you know, really quite information rich at a glance yeah. because it has this angry fruit salad output yeah. model. Yeah. So, Rafael said that the blocker. It's Pebs who keeps maintaining it. Is Pebs, but wise, hmm. he keeps maintaining the old tracker, so <laughs> it's there. Okay. Rafael is in favor of dropping it, and Paul will probably point out a few regressions that he would like to see addressed first. Well, I think we should communicate to the SA that we don't want to keep the machine as is, well, just disintegrate it to stretch and delay the problem for the next two, uh, two years. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, DSA has this plan of having a container-based infrastructure, yeah. so, so but, but they have we one. should probably think about moving each part of to its yeah. own thing and well, killing the old server. So I talked uh, a bit further with TSA about that. Uh, their point is they don't want to split uh, QA Debian org into 10 different virtual machines. But if it's not 10, but uh, three or four, probably it will be acceptable. The problem with the containers approach is that they have nothing ready at the moment. So it could take some time until there's something usable. For the D DPO page, I found one that's the, the results of the builds. That's not on the UDD page. The results of that? The results of the, the build. So <laughs> if a build failed on a specific architecture. Uh, you have it on DMD. I don't. Take, take a package that fails. and you, uh, So it's not in the table, but it's in the to-do list at the beginning. Okay, fair enough, but. <laughs> Should we stop now or do we have? <laughs> Maybe we could try to list some, some action items we want to get done by yeah. quote someone. Yeah, <laughs> So action items, who wants to do something for next year? <laughs> so one thing is, um, the, is this. Scheduling checks. Yeah, it has this and scheduling like checks. Common to schedule checks. What else? What do people want to volunteer for? Simple script for rebuilding. 
Karin, ja powiedzieć. Ja. Karin? <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah, sure. Mm. Okay, that's fine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if, if you want to work on that, probably by the, by the end of DevConf, we should just meet and I can show you how I currently do rebuilds. It's clearly far from perfect, but yeah. Okay.